All right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez here, your favorite wrestling. and talk about the greatest thing in the world, professional wrestling. We talk about superstars. We talk about, um, you know, the action inside and outside the ring. We talk about promotions from WWE, the AEW, the TNA, to Ring of Honor for makes major news headlines in terms of professional wrestling. We talk about it here on this show on the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. So make sure you like and subscribe to the show so you guys could definitely be a part of this awesome mix. Uh, be, you know, make sure you guys feel like your voice is heard. Hit up the thoughts. I mean, hit up the chat. Type your thoughts inside that chat box so we can talk about something super cool. Uh, so yeah, don't be shy. Definitely love a lot of audience engagement. There are no wrong answers. Would absolutely love to talk about anything and hear you guys' hot takes in terms of the world of professional wrestling. All right, so let's go to talk about our fifth and final segment. We're gonna gun this DeLorean to 88 miles per hour. Go back in time to 1995 in your house for a great white north uh, came uh, from Winnipeg uh, Arena in Manitoba. Canada, Shawn Michaels was stripped of the WWE, well, WWF, uh, Intercontinental Championship due to a real-life confrontation and getting himself beat up, um, you know, the night before. You know, I watched the Shawn Michaels documentary. You know, he was, I guess, you know, you know, trying to get at some girls. And I guess there was, a, you know, a couple of dudes. I think... I think it was military. I don't think... You no, know, it might have been military, guys. Uh, I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. And then, like... Um, they got in an actual fight and then Sean got, uh, you know, Sean got hurt and he was, uh, you know, he had to relinquish his, uh, you know, intercontinental championship uh, because of that. Like he, you know, got hurt outside of the WWE and, you know, in terms of, you know, Vince McMahon, that was, uh, you know, that was a big no, no, you know, you're committed to this job where you're, you know, you're putting your body on the line and, you know, if you come in hurt, you're not going to be able to perform back in the day wrestlers, you know, they used to fight for, for television time. You know, um, you know, they used to travel and wrestle, you know, seven days a week. You know, if you're hurt, you know, you don't get TV time. And if you don't get TV time, you don't get paid. So, um, you know, having Sean get stripped of the WWE Intercontinental Championship was, a, you know, kind of crazy. The Intercontinental title was awarded to Dean Douglas, who would lose it to Razor Ramon within the next 11 minutes. Elsewhere on the card, um, you know, a debut, a debuting Gold Dust, formerly known as Dustin Rhodes, beating Marty Jannetty via pinfall. So, um, you know, Dustin Rhodes, Dusty, not Dustin. Yeah, Dustin Rhodes. I don't know why whenever I say Dustin Rhodes, I feel like I'm saying Dusty. You know, uh, Gold Dust. I loved Gold Dust. I thought he was super badass. I thought he was super cool. Added kind of like an edgier element inside the world of professional wrestling. You know, some people might have thought it would have been, you know, it was a little... You know, it was a little weird, but ultimately, you know, he was part of the Shattered Shattered Dreams production. You know, he was kind of portrayed as like this Hollywood, you know, movie star, you know, back in back in time. You know what I mean? Like he had the fake wig. He'd come out in the robe and he was just gold dust. You know what I mean? Like he was gold. I, th- I love gold dust. I thought it was pretty cool. All right. Next, we're going to talk about 2000 WWE. No Mercy. First and foremost, the WWE, uh, WWF No Mercy game on the Nintendo 64 is without a doubt the best wrestling game in the world. It was the, you know, the debut of the ladder match. It was also the steel cage match where it was an actual like uh, chain link fence instead of like the, the black bars that you saw at WrestleMania 2000. This was a great video game. It was amazing. It was very... It was it was fun to play. You know, there was also, you know, you can go backstage. You know, there was, uh, you know, you're in the back, you're in a broil room match. You were also, uh, you know, at a bar, you know, um, you throw somebody through the pool table. It, 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 just talking about it kind of makes you want to play it. You know, definitely love that game. Grew up playing it with my siblings. Definitely one of the best games in the whole entire world. Plus, you know, just the creations were just, uh, you know, it was just, it was just cool. It was awesome. Definitely. So WWE No Mercy 2000 went down at the Pepsi Arena in Albany, New York. Title changes included Los Conquistadores, which was Edge and Christian in a luchador mask, taking the WWF Tag Team Championships away from the Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff, and Kurt Angle beating The Rock in a no disqualification match for the WWF Championship. Also were returning Stone Cold Steve Austin fought Rikishi to a no contest results, resulted in like a, a no holds barred match, which says, uh, you know, which was pretty uh which was pretty cool i think i remember renting this on vhs i remember you know going to our local you know you know uh 
Hollywood video or was superstar video or like Blockbuster. You guys remember those? Kind of showing my age here a little bit, you know. Oh my God, it's crazy. But I remember, you know, you'd have to rent a new release. Um, you know, it was two dollars and fifty cents for five days, which wasn't bad. Which you know, as a you know, compared to you know, renting movies or or, or shows on Amazon or on HBO Max, like it's a lot, dude. It's a lot of money, even just to rent it for like, oh, you get it for 36 hours. You can, you know, you can replay it as much as you want. You know, and you're like, damn, dude, that's a, that's kind of a lot of money, man. It's crazy. But ultimately, you know, uh, you know, WrestleMania 2000. No, uh, sorry. I'm thinking about the video game. Uh, WWF No Mercy 2000 uh, was a was a banger. Now back to 2000. Now, not back. Going forward to 2001 on a championship match stacked Monday Night Raw featured four titled, um, titles changing hands. Uh, Tajiri defeated Billy Kidman for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship, which was, uh, I didn't, I remember watching this. I didn't like that match because uh, Billy Kidman, I thought, was, you know, the better fit for the WCW introducing, um, well, w WWF, WWF and WCW during the invasion angle, which was, you know, handed terribly by Vince McMahon and creative. Um, Billy Kidman was just a better fit. You know, I, I love Tajiri and, you know, I he was very, he had this, you know, he was a cruiserweight. He was high flyer. Yeah, he was all that in a bag of chips. But I just thought Billy Kidman was better. You know, I definitely thought he should have had the title. Um, but um, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Then Kurt Angle, the Olympic gold medalist, uh, defeated Rhino for the WCW United States Championship. Bradshaw defeated the Hurricane for, uh, you know, for the WWF European Championship. Chris Jericho and The Rock defeated the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray Dudley and Devon to become the new WWF Tag Team Championships. So you basically had WWF, like, take all the belts. Like, you know what I mean? Which is kind of a damn shame, which, you know, which which sucks. But then once again, you know, not really surprised here. Not really surprised to find out how WWE, you know, completely just like, you know, like I said, during the invasion angle, how Vince McMahon was like, all right, you know, we want to prove that WCW wrestlers, you know, can't hang with the WWF. And then you had the Dudley boys inside professional, inside WWE slash WWF for quite some time. And, uh, you know, because they were so ECW, they were kind of thrown into that boat, that invasion angle where it was like, hey, yeah, we'll just, you know, bunch up ECW and WCW and have them look completely stupid against the, you know, the WWF. But, um, you know, I don't know. I just thought it could have been handled a lot, you know, a lot better. Uh, so, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. You know, Bradshaw defeating the Hurricane. Like, dude, Bradshaw's like a hefty, like, 200 and something, you know, almost 300 pound, like muscle guy. And the hurricane's probably like, I probably weigh more than Gregory, Gregory Helms back in the day. Like, that's crazy. Like, I don't know, you know, it was, it was you know, obviously, you know, back in time. Uh, so yeah. All right. Uh, now we're moving forward back in 2000 and 2003, damn in Nashville, Tennessee on a weekly episode of the NWA slash TNA, Jeff Jarrett beat AJ Styles to win the NWA world, a heavyweight title. You know, I, I am not too keen on the NWA and I've started watching TNA probably like around 2006, but Jeff Jarrett seems like he's been everywhere, man. Like he was on WWF. He was on the NWA. He was in TNA. He was in WCW. And he was Damn, he was everywhere. Now he's on AEW. You know, he's doing things there as well. So, um, man, this guy, you know, he he's pro wrestling. So, you know, AJ Styles, so young. Oh, my God, he looks so young. That's crazy. Obviously, it sucks he got injured. You know, aging is a, you know, aging is, is a thing. You know, sometimes we can't do things that, you know, that our body used to do. But then our, you know, our brain obviously has, a, you know, other plans. And like, yeah, dude, but yeah, Eric, you can still go on a... You can still go on a hike run with your, you know, with this co-worker that's like 19, 20 years old. Dude, you got this. Come back with like a, like a herd of Achilles and, you know, my ankle, like, oh my God, it was, uh, you know, it was bad. But uh, I don't know. Uh, anyways, um, you know, Jeff Jarrett, man, in the world of professional wrestling. 2006 TNA pay-per-view, Bound for Glory, took place uh, from the uh, Capuere Sports Arena in Detroit, Michigan. 
The main event saw Sting beat Jeff Jarrett for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship with Kurt Angle serving as the special guest enforcer. Earlier in the show, Latin American Exchange Hernandez and Homicide beat AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels in the six sided of uh, six sides of steel cage match to claim the NWA World Tag Team titles. I got to be honest, I was a huge fan of those, you know, of the, you know, the six sided ring. I thought that was badass. Added kind of like a. You know, just make TNA different. Like, you know what I mean? Eventually, they would go to a four-sided ring, you know, which was, you know, in terms of modern-day wrestling, it's probably the, it was the best decision. But a six-sided ring, I remember watching it for the first time. I was like, dude, that's, uh, you know, that was cool. You know what I mean? I remember begging my my um, my parents to buy me, a, you know, a, a TNA ring, you know. But those rings, you know, like you got it as a kid, it feels like, uh, you know, the turnbuckles were very, like, flimsy i don't know they always broke uh so you know definitely thought it was uh you know it was cool you know that you used to have those the, the x division championship matches where you know you'd have the ropes and you have to climb you know into the middle and try to get the title i thought that was super cool as well but it's six sided steel cage match that's uh you know that's pretty that's uh that's pretty damn cool uh but um but yeah uh anyways moving forward we have the 2017 WWE presented the TLC pay-per-view from the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The top matches, the top uh, matches on the card were famously shaken up just hours before the event due to an illness to top talent. Um, the event was uh, you know, due to see the shield reunite for the first time to face Braun Strowman Kane, the bar, and the Miz in a handicap main event. In the end, Kurt Angle actually replaced Roman Reigns, making uh, his in-ring appearance uh, for WWE since his original run with the company when it ended in 2006. In addition, the match between the Demon, Finn Balor, and Sister Abigail, um, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt was replaced with a dream match between Finn Balor and AJ Styles, which was uh, which was which was bad. Which was, I didn't, I hated that. I wanted to see this match so bad. I used to love how Bray Wyatt, you know, he kind of had this dark, ominous, like horror, horror movie kind of feel to it. And, you know, just kind of, it just, it sucked. It was terrible. Much like, you know, seeing this, uh, you know, revamp of the Shield suck. You know, then you had a goofy, you know, you had the, you know, you had the entrance come out. You had Seth, you had Dean Ambrose. And then coming up with the, with the cheesiest smile in the world, Kurt Angle with the, you know, with the, with the bulletproof. Oh my God. It was, uh, it, it was interesting. It, you know, by all means, it was cool. I was like, dude, that's cool for Kurt. Good for you, man. Good for you, dog. You know, I thought that was, I thought, you know, all in all, I thought it was a little wonky, but I thought it was super cool at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, I don't know, just that, just that cheesy smile, man. That's crazy. Oh, uh, man. In 2018, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins defeated Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler to win the Raw Tag Team Championships on Monday Night Raw in Providence, Rhode Island. I think this was once when Dean Ambrose actually went heel. I think that's when he attacked Seth Rollins. I could be wrong. Uh, don't quote me on that. But, uh, you know, once again, you know, kind of showing the Dean Ambrose character after he left the Shield and, uh, you know, a little bit before he decided to go on to AEW for better uh, creative pastures. Um, you know, he was, you know, I, I didn't like it. You know, the moral compass and stuff like that. Like, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really into it. I thought it was kind of stupid. But, uh, you know, obviously back then, you know, and, uh, you know, it was still during the Vince McMahon creative era. So, you know, just bad, bad timing. It was, you know, kind of, kind of crazy, kind of stupid. I feel like the fans would have loved to see Ambrose and Rollins kind of go longer as the tag team title holders for uh for quite some time more but um you know also then you had future stars like you know drew mcintyre who eventually got a wwe um uh, you know uh championship um championship run which i feel like he deserved all along a couple of wrestling notable birthdays we have pedro morales bad news brown pork chop cash don harris uh taya valkyrie um so you know happy birthday to all those guys Thank you for jumping into my wrestling DeLorean. Going back in time to some of these key moments, some of these awesome moments in the world of professional wrestling. Definitely, uh, you know, um, you know, loved having you guys sit shotgun. You know, definitely. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Um, that's it for me today. Hope you guys had a good one. Follow us on Twitter, slash X, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook for more content and updates. And like I always say, if I have not made you a wrestling fan by now, if you're a huge NFL fan, we have two football podcasts with the GSMC Football Podcast with Kenneth. We got the Chip Shot Football Podcast with Manny, so make sure you guys find out all your breaking news in the world of the National Football League. Tune into their shows as well. We also have college football. College football runs Saturdays. A lot of great teams. A lot of, you know, a lot of unpredictable matches. Sometimes, you know, favoring the the home team that, you know, that it could be a shocker. Tune into Tommy's GSMC College Football Podcast. Um, you know, it's pretty badass, super entertaining. And in terms of football, college, or even the NFL, and, uh, you know, even the NBA, even the NBA is actually, it starts today. Um, make sure you tune into Chris Shepard's fantasy sports shows, find out your stardoms, your sit who to draft in the NBA. Uh, well, I think it's already done, but, uh, basically, you know, find out your stardoms, your sit who to pick up off the waiver wire, make your team into a, you know, into a WWE championship caliber team by watching, uh, Chris Shepard's podcast. We also have Nelson with basketball, the GSMC basketball podcast. We had the New York Liberty win the WNBA championship. And now we have the NBA starting tonight and i feel like this is going to be one of the greatest seasons in the nba there's a lot of young talent it's kind of you know it's kind of up in the air there's a couple of teams that are out there and you're like man like that team sucks but i feel like ultimately it's you know it's 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 anybody's ball game it's anybody's buddy ball game so uh yeah speaking of ball games we have the world series featuring the new york yankees and the los angeles dodgers make sure you tune into tj's uh gsmc sports podcast they're going to have a you know exclusive uh, information and hot takes in terms of the World Series, uh, you know, in-depth analysis on both teams. Tune into the uh, Sports by GSMC with Jeremy as well to get all your cool, uh, you know, sports all around sports, you know, from baseball, basketball, football, hockey, you name it. Uh, the you know, just a great way, your one-stop shop for uh, for amazing sports content. All right, guys, so that's it for me today. Stay beautiful, but most importantly, I love you. <laughs>